What's up, everybody? Welcome to Hammerdown Motorsports. Here we have the Rebel out in the beautiful sunlight. It was pretty cloudy this morning, but the sky has broken and the sun is out. There is something we got today for the Ram Rebel, and it's over at Todd at TSEs. So since we're under quarantine and we're trying to stay away from people, I've devised myself a little bit of a plan so I can get what I need without actually coming into contact with anybody. We're going to use the Ram boxes today. So what we're going to do, we're going to open the Ram box up. Got our money right here for what we're getting. Just going to tape it right like that. And then when I pull up to Todd's, I'm just going to rev the engine so he knows I'm there. Then I'll unlock the Ram box. He can open it up, put the product into the box, take the money. We can get a little wave at the window and we are all still quarantined and good to go. So let's fire this thing up and head down there. feel good to be back on the road it's kind of funny like I, I really haven't been out much in the truck maybe driven a handful of times in the last six weeks and it's just something that I normally would always do and kind of take it take for granted but now that we've been kind of quarantining at home we just haven't been out and it's, it's, a, it's a strange feeling honestly and it does feel good to actually get out and be able to actually do something for once and just being able to do this in the way that we're doing it and still retain our quarantine and all that kind of thing we got little kids at home we don't want them getting sick stuff like that and obviously we work from home so it's really not a big deal to be able to stay there for quite a while without having to really go anywhere which is which is nice because we're not exposing ourselves to anyone else and we're not getting any kind of germs run into our house i mean the things that we get delivered to the house we leave in the garage for a few days quarantine them that way use clorox wipes and all that luckily enough i was at costco before everybody bought all the clorox wipes and i got enough to last us a little while and that's helped out quite a bit but definitely drop in the comments what are you guys doing during quarantine are you staying at home are you still having to go to work all that kind of stuff like that are you guys getting cabin fever like me just kind of want to get out there i was hoping to go on summer vacation and take the truck out on the beach and all that stuff's closed now and i just i just really hope it opens up soon and, and we can be you know get a, a good plan in order to deal with this thing without people getting sick but still being able to live our normal lives all right, here we are in Effort of Pennsylvania. If you guys are looking for Todd's shop, it's over here. Hagee Auto Parts and TSEs in the same building. This is also Westy's shop. If you guys are needing any automotive service or accessories, definitely the guys to check out. All right, let's see if he hears us. <laughs> There's no way he didn't hear us. Here he is. <laughs> I'm doing good. I'm staying safe in my bubble. <laughs> Don't spread your germs. <laughs> I just put them in the Ram box. We're, we're, we're doing the quarantine exchange. We got them. We got those. Those are going on today. <laughs> you can't hear me either. <laughs> this thing's soundproof. I didn't even know that. I can hear you, but you can't hear me. <laughs> Whoa, don't open the door. Timo, the germs are in, brother. <laughs> I'll be right back. All right. All right, well, I did have a plan, and I guess it didn't work out exactly the way I thought. I was just going to have him go into the Ram box, grab the money, put this... Well, we got, we're getting wheel spacers. Just we, we let the cat out of the bag there now. But either way, we're going to throw those on today and see how they look. So definitely stay tuned to the end of the video to see how they all look. But yeah, we got them in the back of the cab. We kept our six foot apart. I think, I think we're good to go as far as the, the Corona goes. All right, since I'm the only one that's touched the Ram box anyway, what we're going to do, we'll relocate. <laughs> put that right there. And then... Six foot distancing. Let's hope the wind doesn't blow that money away. This is Steve-O. From, from this far away. Hi, right, brother. <laughs> <laughs> this is how much a hug and kiss cost Steve, guys. One crisp, 100, crisp 20. Absolutely. Thank so you. if you need to social distance, Todd will hook you up. I will, man. You just, you just do this kind of setup like we did here. Yeah. <laughs> Bring a little bit of painter's tape with you and you're good to go. There you go, brother, man. Thanks, Steve-O. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. You bet you, brother. I'll send you, you some, I'll, I'll send you some pictures of what this is all going to look like with these on. Right on, brother. 
All right. Like Stay safe, brother. Yeah, you too, Steve-O. Thanks, brother. You bet. Well, we got our transaction taken care of. I didn't want to go inside just because of how many people come in and out of that shop all the time. You never know if somebody has the bug or anything like that. I really, I really hope they find a vaccine or some way that we can go back to normal life, like I said earlier. Because this, this living like this is not, it's not fun at all. You can't see your friends. You can't go out to places with them. You know, it's just kind of kind of lonely actually but either way we did get it done got to see my buddy there for a second at least and uh, we kept our distance and everything's good to go as far as that is and now we got another mod to put on the truck so I can't wait to put them on all right we are back here at the shop and for those of you who are wondering why we're going with spacers well there's a little bit of a story behind this and it basically falls down to my fault and actually this was kind of brought up by one of your comments on the last video and somebody noticed they said you know the the factory wheels are a positive 18 offset and I think the ones that you have now are also a positive 18 offset and I've been telling you guys the whole time they're negative 18 and it kind of got me thinking and I'm like okay Let's look into this a little bit more. So I looked into my order and it didn't say the offset on the order, but it did say the part number. So I went back in to Tyrac.com and now everything was a little bit different on their website from what I remember when I ordered them. And there's four options available now. One's an 18 and one's something I, I can't remember. But either way, there's now four options available, two very distinct negative offsets. Before, there was only two options. There was, it said negative 44 and it said it looked like negative 18. So I figured, okay, I'll order the negative 18 because I don't want the 44s that are gonna stick out and I have to cut a bunch of stuff. So we test fit the rear and I'm not, I'm not gonna say that I'm an expert at all on wheels because I'm definitely not. And this is actually kind of a learning experience for me as well. But yes, I, I really like the fitment of the rear and we didn't fit one of the fronts and we ended up mounting them all up. And when I put the front on, everything was more narrow than I would have liked. And I was kind of like, okay, well, at least nothing rubs and everything fits. So we'll run it like that. And just over time, I've kind of just like, I, I, I love the way the truck looks, but I think it could use a little bit more stance in the front. And after, yeah, after looking into that order, it, it appears that what I do have is a positive 18 offset, 20 inch, nine wide wheel, which, I guess is what it is at this point, but it isn't all bad. It, it, we're we're gonna work this out, and I think at the end of today, everything is gonna be completely satisfactory on the wheel standpoint of this truck. And for all the negative comments I got for buying 12-year-old Rockstar 2s, I don't think any of you guys bought them anyways. So either way, this is kind of just my journey through the wheel process on this truck. But we're gonna put the one and a quarter inch spacer on the front, which is gonna bring our wheels out about an inch and a quarter. Well, obviously an inch and a quarter. And that should keep us pretty much in line with what the rear is, kind of by our rough calculations here. And hopefully we don't rub, but it should center it up a little bit more with the mud flap as well, because right now it's sitting in too far. And a lot of the mud and everything's getting kicked up under the truck. If you guys have seen the under views of this truck, it's completely filthy. So that's kind of just something that maybe will help with that a little bit. But either way, the rear, I'm very, very happy with. So I'm glad I did get the positive 18s for the rear stance because it's exactly what I want. And just adding the spacers, it's like 120 bucks, wasn't a big deal. And this way I'm gonna have four of the same wheels. I can rotate them. So all's good at the end of the day. At least I hope, as long as we don't rub. So here we have our wheel spacers unboxed. Just gonna give them a quick Clorox, and drop tools everywhere. All that kind of thing. Make sure they're nice and safe. And what we have here comes with these lug nuts, but we're gonna use these over here on our studs. So we're gonna stick this, our factory studs are gonna come through here. These nuts are gonna go onto here. And then obviously our wheel is gonna go onto these studs here. And we're gonna to torque these down. And there's no instructions in the box, so I'm just kind of using examples that I've seen on the internet at 130 foot pounds for these spacers. Make sure everything's nice and tight and safe. And so let's get this truck lifted up, get these front wheels off, and then we can start installing our spacers. All right, so we have the spacer on the truck and there's a couple little things that concern me slightly. This hub-centric ring, seeing how there is such a big difference between this and this, and there was on my wheel as well. You can see 
how big that hole is compared to our hub. I got this hub centric ring when I got the wheels just so I wouldn't put all the pressure on the stud rather than actually taking up some of that with the hub itself. So with this here, we're kind of going to run into that same issue being that this is a larger bore. I can't put the hub centering ring on the outside of this because obviously it's going to be centered with the wheel, but it's just going to be kind of moving around in here. There's no hub for it to be on. So I figured for it to be in here, it is fairly tight once I centered everything up here. And I just have these hand tight right now. These do stick out slightly. So we're probably got about maybe a quarter of an inch of our stud sticking out, maybe about one thread or something like that. We could technically trim that if we had to. It really all depends on what kind of wheel you have. We have two different bolt patterns on this wheel, but I'm not entirely sure if they're gonna line up the way we want it to because this is obviously flat here. There's no real relief for it. So I'm just gonna put these up against, kind of see where we're at and see if these are gonna work for us. Okay, so we ran into another little issue here, just kind of what I was saying before about the studs sticking out and there's no way for them to kind of, you know, have a relief inside the wheel or anything like that. Really our only option would be to trim the end of the stud and I don't really wanna do that. Honestly, I just, it's just not a clean way to do this install for myself. And I'd rather actually just take up that space with a, maybe a thicker spacer. We thought an inch and a quarter was gonna be enough, but apparently it is just a little bit shy. And you can see our sidewall is sticking out a little bit now, which looks really nice. But it's actually the tread itself is what we're really kind of concerned with, because the sidewall is not gonna fling stuff all over the truck. It's gonna be the tread itself. So we can go out a little bit. I mean, this is right now with the spacer, everything is just kind of sucked up to the end of the studs. So if we go with a little bit thicker, I think there's available right now, there's a inch and three quarter. I don't want to go to a two inch, that's a little bit too long. Inch and three quarter would definitely give us enough space. And I'm not sure if there is an inch and a half one available at all. That would probably be just about right here. I think a quarter of an inch would probably give us what we need. But if we have to go a little bit more, I think we'll just try that out and see how it all goes. But I'm gonna get on the phone with Todd here, kind of let him know what we're getting into as far as this. And well, I, I can pretty much tighten this up enough so I can set it down and then I can do a sweep with the tires just to kind of see how we're looking at for clearance. But that's kind of where we're at with the spacer right now. And just we're gonna kind of see how we're gonna make a solution for this. All right, everybody, it is the next day and I really hate to do this to you guys. I really wanted to have a final result on these, but the situation that we are in, basically that's not gonna happen for a little bit, but we did find a solution, which is good news. Todd called me back by the end of the day yesterday and he said that he found a setup that's gonna work for us. It's gonna be a spacer that is hub centric to this. They're a little bit more money, but not too bad. I think it's like an extra 60 bucks. Really not that big a deal at all. But the new one's gonna be an exact fit to this hub. It's also in black, which is gonna be nice because we don't have to paint it. And then there's gonna be a lip on the spacer as well. So we can run a hub centric ring. We're gonna to have to kind of wait until they come in to figure out what size we're gonna need. So I'm not sure if this size is gonna be the same as the one that's gonna be on our spacer or not. You can see this one fits on here pretty nicely, but you definitely wanna have your wheels hub centric. So if you hit a bump or whatever, it's not just gonna shock load these studs and end up breaking them off or whatever. It's just nice to have that nice solid true hub kind of deal going on. And then everything's gonna be a whole lot better, especially with a 35 inch tire. There's a lot of forces going on there when you hit bumps and whatever, and you wanna make this as solid as possible. But I think it's gonna be worth the wait. And unfortunately, we are not gonna be able to finish the truck today because, well, we're waiting on parts. But this is kind of just what we ran into. So just keeping you guys up to date. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed coming on this learning process of figuring out how to get spacers on these trucks if you guys are looking to do that this is kind of what you're running into and hopefully i can save you guys some of the leg work because we're kind of doing this whole kind of r d thing ourselves figuring out what we need to do to get this truck exactly the way i want it so we're going to leave it off there i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did don't forget to give it a big thumbs up if you're new to the channel hit that subscribe button and as always keep that hammer down mm -hmm.